Welcome to the Working Tools Podcast, where today we'll be interviewing Most Worshipful Brother Ken Overy, Grandmaster of Masons in British Columbia and Yukon. Ladies and gentlemen, brethren all, welcome to the Working Tools Podcast, a casual conversation around Freemasonry. First, it's important to note that our thoughts and opinions are our own and do not reflect those of our Grand Lodge or respective craft or concordant bodies. Please connect with us and ask questions via our website at theworkingtoolspodcast.com. Today on the Working Tools Podcast, we have our usual group of hosts, very worshipful brother David Colbeth from King Solomon Lodge number 60 in uh, Auburn, Washington, worshipful brother Stephen Chung from Prince Charles number 153 in Kelowna, British Columbia, worship brother Jared Dunham from Penticton 147 in Penticton, British Columbia, and I'm Matt Apple, I'm a member of Mill Creek Lodge number 243, and we meet in Mount Lake Terrace, Washington. And today we are honored to have with us Most Worshipful Brother Ken Overy, who's Most Worshipful Grandmaster of the Most Worshipful Grand Lodge of Free and Accepted Masons of British Columbia and Yukon. Welcome, Most Worshipful Sir. Well, thank you for having me here tonight, this evening. Looking forward to our chat. And so we're uh, we're honored that we we get to uh, interview some of the Grandmasters and discuss sort of in the beginning of their year where they where they want to go and sort of at the end of their term where how they feel like it went so um this is this is i guess exit interview might be a strong word but <laughs> this is our <laughs> our chance to to talk to you and and see how you feel things went in the grand lodge of british columbia in the yukon over the last year and i guess my first question is just sort of a softball of how'd it go well in a nutshell it went fantastic uh you know, I wish that somebody, uh, most people could see their jurisdiction through the eyes of a grandmaster, uh, traveling everywhere and visiting all the people. I was a little apprehensive when I first started off the year with the um, just coming out of COVID. And there was a little, a lot of trepidation of people not coming back. And that, that was like that at the beginning of the year. But I'm, I'm happy to say that as the year went by, more and more people were attending the lodge. And lots of things. I, I don't want to take the full credit for it, but a lot of visits I went to, some of these uh, older older brethren came up and said, you know, this is the first time I've attended Lodge and, you know, I'll, I'll be back. They're comfortable. They know what it, they know what it's like now. They're starting to feel what they felt of why they were coming to Lodge in the first place. And that's, that's fantastic. Uh, there's been very little... Um, negativity this year uh there was the odd one at the beginning of the year nothing nothing great just just people venting i mean that's we had covid they had to get rid get it out of their systems but it's been phenomenal the um the work the brethren are doing the amount of new members coming in is just mind-boggling uh the new programs we've we set forth the begin new and the cornerstone project uh has been an immense help in, well, I'd say recruiting, but in, in highlighting what Freemasonry is, how we can get there and what we're all about. And it's, uh, I'm, I'm glad enough to be the recipient of those initial, uh, initial versions of it. Uh, I've been all over. I have, uh, I think five visits left official visits. I have three, three for lodges and a couple of out of the province left but you know and i'm looking forward to every one of them it's just been a it's it's been a so much fun i couldn't believe it i had a past master say that it's it's uh being a grandmaster is like a roller coaster you have your ups and you have your downs and you know i've been on my way up all all year and i'm, I'm dreading the last day when i come down <laughs> but it's been fantastic i i I couldn't have asked for uh, a better, a better term in office. I'm, I'm very glad to hear that. I, I, you hit on something that I've been wondering about. I don't know. This is a grandmaster kind of question, but the uh, I've heard from a lot of sources that the there has been this influx of masons since sort of the COVID restrictions tapered off. Do you think that that is a? And admittedly, this would obviously be anecdotal. Do you think it, that this is a? Like, was it just pent-up demand? Nobody joined for three years, and so now it's just three years' worth of people all at once? Or do you think there's actually some sort of a change that has come with COVID to motivate people to join lodges? Well, a little, 
little bit of both. At, at first, I, I, I believe it was just people were waiting to join. But with this new program we have where you can get online and, and look up so much, there's so many new people. COVID left a, a big hole in a lot of people's lives. They had, uh, you know, there's the, the way the world has, has been for the four years ago, we all tended to isolate ourselves. Uh, we had our games to play. We worked from home. And it was, and that trend was going. Um, COVID forced that upon us. We, we weren't allowed to go out. We weren't allowed to communicate with each other or interact. And, uh, you know, the, we're one of the better offshoots of that as people had time to look on the computer and look things up. And they found Freemasonry. And it seems to be, from the generalities coming in, uh, what they seem to be looking for. There's a lot of a, a lot of young members coming in. We are uh, at, at the height, which might be to your first point about pent up people wanting to join. We were getting um, 20 inquiries a day, which was an incredible amount. It came up over the thousands. Uh, now that's gone down to about seven a day, seven a day's, in a year, that's that's all. You know, that's a thousand at least real people. I mean, there's not, there's there's always the people who are just inquiring just to ask if uh, there's just curiosity, idle curiosity. I'll put it that way. But then we have the people that are actually really interested, and in some cases, we've had to put actually a, a halter on them to just hold them back and say, okay, well, you know, learn about it. Don't just run forward again and and with the uh, the way we are running is um, we're trying to stop these people from racing in racing ahead and then be just a, the two year statistic because that's the statistics that we have after two years people just fade away we have uh, you know initially when you're the entrepreneurs when you first came in Everybody makes a big fuss of you. They, they train you. They teach you. They do whatever you can. And then you finally become a master mason. And then the new entered apprentice comes in. And they all just shift their focus over. Okay, let's get this guy. We've now learned from our, our errors. And we now treat the new master masons the way they should be treated. We're continuing to mentor them on a higher scale. But we are showing them what actually we as Freemasons are about. And I've tried to do this in my year, every visit I have, if there's an entered apprentice or a fellow craft there, I will make a fuss over them, you know, remind everybody that's our future. Uh, these are the people that we need to keep our legacy going for another 150 years. And, and I always ask all the other members, if you have, remember why you joined, remember what kept you here, impart that knowledge on your on these new members. And one, one thing I've ended up, I've the last, I've been coining a phrase, uh, you know, when you, as things will always happen, as it's going to happen to each and every one of us, we're going to sit in the background and say, no, that's not the way we did it in our time. But I want you to be able to say that because they're, they're better than we are. And that's all I ask of all the brethren. And I get a, a really good response from that. The Master Masons, we always, if there's any newer Master Masons, we always talk about them. And just as we do with the old, if any, any longstanding members, uh, we make a fuss over them. They're, they're the, and I had, I remember I had one meeting, I had seven fellow crafts and seven people over 55 years service. And I just had them both stand up and talk to each other. And they just happened to be the way they were sitting on each side of the room. I said, you know, these are the people that you, to the younger members, these are the people you talk to, these these older members. They'll tell you what Freemasonry is, the real story behind Freemasonry. <laughs> and uh, that's a theme I've been working off of all year, and it seems to be well-received. And it gives people a little bit of a, t a chance to remember why they are, why they are like that, and why why Freemasonry is where it is today. And how we can improve it. So, uh, in answer to your question, which I took the, the scenic route to get there, is uh, yeah, <laughs> there there are a lot of new members that are are seeking it because they are looking for something, and we happen to be 
what they're looking for. So we are getting a lot of members who have been asking to join and continually do. <laughs> and continuing on on your theme of recognizing people, uh, I, I listened to your show. I apologize that I wasn't able to be here last year uh, when you were here. I was actually down with COVID. And, uh, but I, I, I did listen to the show and uh, wanted to follow up on a question. You had said that you changed kind of the process of picking your officers and also, you had some. I, I'm, I quoted them as a fill-in positions as you traveled around, and uh, you had events and things. And so you'd you'd find somebody from the local area rather than importing one of your officers uh, or, or having somebody local there. You'd, you'd grab somebody local in the lodge that maybe was an awardee. I, I don't recognize the the award person that you talked about, but you'd have somebody local. Oh, good. That's a, that was a. I, I purposely left that out, but I'm glad you filled it back in so I could talk about it. <laughs> uh, we have a one of the one of my officers is a, a standard bearer, um, and his duty in Grand Lodge is to walk in with the Grand Lodge of uh, BC and Yukon standard, place it, and at the end of the meeting, he picks it up and walks it out. It's it's a. Um, I decided this year that I was going to rather than have a standard person who would only be so many places, I went in and I asked somebody who was, I asked for somebody from the district who was a medal of, of merit winner. Now the medal of merit is uh, something that is to me is one of the most important. Uh, if you're going to get an award, that's it. It's a little medal that goes on your chest and that's picked by the people in your district. Uh, it's a person who has, never had any desire to be a, a, a master. He's never gone through all the chairs, but he's the man who's always there. If you need something done, he's always front and center. He will always do lectures, anything you need, but he's just had no desire to be a leader. When he's recognized, he gets that medal and that night he gets his, you know, he's clap and he gets his, everybody pats him on the back and then, you know, it fades away. Well, I asked this year to, give me the name of a Medal of Merit person. I had him stand, bring the standard with in me. So what that happened was in a suite, he stands directly behind me and he stays there. And when I introduce everybody, I introduce him and, and say he's a Medal of Merit and then talk, talk on him. I, I decided this year that I want to talk on the people. The people are the, we talk about ourselves. It's, it's right in the address of the brethren. You know, we should celebrate ourselves. Well, celebrate him and if a medal of merit if there happens to be nobody in the area or if the person is a little too long in the tooth to be able to walk in i'll ask for somebody who is of great notoriety in the district just the guy everybody talks about and and showcase him for everybody to see and failing that i picked the newest master mason <laughs> so i had it covered all year great success i turned um you know, to, to, to my way of thinking, I, I turned a mundane job of, of something that's this person stands here and I've turned it into a living job that showcases everybody from every jurist, every district. And, and, you know, just to acknowledge, to acknowledge ourselves and to acknowledge them. And well, that's what that is. Yeah. So you, so you've enjoyed your year so far and, You've had great following and great support everywhere you've been. Yes, yes, the year has been fantastic. Uh, the followings are. Uh, I've I've had uh, even out up into the interior where it's a little hard to get to. I've had uh, huge suites, suites of a dozen or more. And again, this year, I in the suites instead of having everybody. Uh, everybody come in it. I only picked Grand Lodge officers and like I said, that standard bearer and of course the constitution bearer. And but they've been big sweets. I, I I've had so much support from my um my officers this year. It's you know if I was ever to use the word humble it would be at, at that time. <laughs> uh, uh, all right. And so now, do you think that in your year you've managed to achieve all the all the goals you set out to achieve, and um, or is there any is there any uh, um, um, I don't know particular highlights that that you wanted to share and stand up? Highlight would be hard. 
uh, and to say I, I'd be lying if I told you I, I accomplished everything I want to accomplish. I mean, and anybody who's been a master of anything knows that one more a year, I would have had it all. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. It's like you, you you get to the end of the year and you think, "Hey, I'm finally ready to do this." I could, I, <laughs> if I had one more year, I could do so much more. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You look at your little bulletin board. Oh yeah, and it's you know, just, it's a week before Grand Lodge. And I thought, oh yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> but no, I, I I think I've accomplished quite a bit. I I I think I remember at the beginning of the year I said that my I considered my job this year was to rebuild. Freemasonry in the jurisdiction and, and to get it, get it, the wheels of Freemasonry rolling again. And I'm satisfied with this, what I've done on that. I mean, there's a lot more to do, but uh, I, I'm quite happy with the way I have things running or not. I have the way the lot, the jurisdiction is running. Right. Well, I know, I, I know I was at your official visits for districts nine and 10 and, and the numbers that were out, it was really nice to see that many people out. It's been a while since uh, the sidelines have been so full in, in, in either of the lodges, right? So uh, that that was really nice to see that that volume of support. That was, and I was I was totally happy to see that. And uh, I, if you noticed, and you probably did it in Penticton, and uh, and actually anywhere where there's a, a repast after. The hum in the room. People are talking to each other again. They're laughing. They're having a good time, and that's what that's what the way it used to be. And I'm I'm so happy to see that coming back. People are talking to each other and enjoying it, just enjoying <clears throat> each company and enjoying the fact that they were there. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I, I don't know. One of the things that's going to stand out for me in the meeting part um, actually wasn't in the meeting. Um, you know, I go and I visit Penticton Lodge a lot, and, and uh, when we all went from the banquet to the hall for the meeting, we got one of the neighbors uh, got his name. Jerry Anderson got his name for uh, 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 coming. He he. How do I join you guys? I said, well, you know. <laughs> but you, the the hall is right here next door. I said you got to figure out which nights they meet. Oh, that's easy. There's never any parking around here those nights, right? And uh, <laughs> and, and and he says, "Well, I want to join. How do I join? I've been trying to figure that out, right?" So um, obviously, he lived on the other side of the building from where they posted that big poster, right? Uh, so he was on the other side, right? But uh, now I remember, you know, there was a prospect that came out of that night just by having all of us in our suits walking up to that building. Uh, I thought that was kind of cool. So uh, noteworthy for your for your visit. I will. I'll re yeah, that's 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 good to hear. But it, it's uh, you know every every meeting has been like that in some form or another, and uh, you know like what you just said. And we did our job that night, didn't we? we yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's yeah. the way I look at it. We did what we were supposed to do. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And and um um you know the 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 ladies I've noticed that the there's been a lot of attendance by the ladies at, at the uh, various functions for you that that has to be very pleasing as well because um that uh Either they've been cooped up for COVID and wanted to get out, or or it was really an attractive uh, function for them to want to go to. I, it was the first one that my wife ever wanted to go to, and uh, and she had a great time. So, well, that's good. That's good. So we've con we've converted another one that we're not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and um, so you know if there's. Uh, if there was anything you wanted to say to uh, the listeners uh, in in um, you know covering your year, um, you know the floor is yours to just you know get, share your message. I guess. Well, the message has always been that uh, we need to work with each other and be good Freemasons and, and to spread the word of what we are to everybody. And the easiest way to do that is to just be a mason outside of the lodge right and it's been working 
it's where it seems to be working in the areas I've talking I've talked to. I was in Prince George and that's well not the same way, but more or less the same thing happened. Somebody wanted to know why who are all these guys walking in out in and out with. Another good plan was the uh, that marker presentations that we're doing when we have that legacy, the 150 years legacy. And we're putting in all, all buildings that are owned by by uh, by the Freemasons themselves, not the rentals. And it, we put it outside. And, and for any listeners who don't know, it's it's a plaque. It celebrates our 150th year, 150 years of Freemasonry. It's 152 now. But the uh, note is that it has a QR code on it. Uh, you just took it, look at it with your camera, and it will give you the history of who's in that building, when they meet. It gives you a contact number for the secretary. Uh, any other body that meets in that lodge is, is more than welcome. We'll add that to the list. And it's just um, when we did the most of the ones we've done, we've done outside. Some In some cases, we just couldn't. But the town came and they stopped. And uh, the very first one I did was Caslow. I, I was a, a brand new ma ma <laughs> grandmaster for 12 hours. And we're in the town of Caslow and the mayor came and the city paper came. And while we we're doing the presentation and I was discussing it and talking to it, cars were driving, cars were stopping. And people were coming out and they, they had a nice little crowd of people around, around us by the time we had finished. So for that town, um, we, we did, you know, the exposure we gave that town to, uh, to in Freemasonry was fan phenomenal. You know, um, the same thing happened in Ladysmith. It's happened in uh, Abbotsford. Abbotsford was fantastic. That was a huge turnout there. There was over 100 people came out to see that. So that's uh, one other thing that we've done to to promote Freemasonry in, in the, in the province, uh, Don McKenzie had started it last year, but unfortunately due to the, the circumstances, he couldn't do it. We have a few more to put out this year. I have four more to, to uh, assign this year before my term is up. But that would, that was a big highlight to see just to see the exposure we're getting into the, the uh, community and the fact that, uh, when we're doing something or we're standing outside, somebody comes up and asks, and instead of some, you know, the other guys, you know, they, they do the shuffle. You know, how do I get away from here? I don't want to talk. They're, they're actually actively engaging the person, inviting them in. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's coming out really, turning out really well. I'm, I, I'm just so happy to see, as I said at the beginning, you know, if you could see free, Freemasonry in BC and Yukon through my eyes for the it's you'd be, it would really give you a boost <laughs> of how well Freemasonry is being accepted and, and we're making a comeback. And I think that's is uh, very important, especially in this time of year. Uh, I, I've been lucky enough that I've had no lodges um, who have closed in my year. Unfortunately, they will be coming up, but uh, there's two different thoughts on that. Uh, people, People have just, uh, you know, they've decided they'd rather stay home. Somebody elder, elder gentleman. But uh, we were at a, a conference yesterday, Grand Masonic Days, actually, in Vancouver. And one of the speakers said something I thought of note. The average lodge in the world has a 10-year has a lifespan. And then it just collapses. And for whatever reason it joined, maybe it's all workers who are in that area happen to be Mason. So they form a lodge while they're working there and you get, you get a lodge formed. And after close, usually around the 10 year mark, most of them have moved on and, and the need is no longer there. The other, they're all Masons, but they're not there anymore. So that one starts to fade, but there's other Masons who might've moved in the area. didn't know about this and it gives them a chance to form a new lodge with a new, reason for, for joining whether they they're all uh, stock car racers or whatever they want to be but it gives them a new reason to give them to join together and and Freemasonry is, is a good vehicle for that so a new one starts it's just the way of the world the way of life so in some cases I'm a little up I'm 
I'm a little concerned they're closing, but in other cases, it's just it's, it's just the way the way things happen. And if you look at it that way, then you realize some of these lodges that are failing are failing for a reason. The, it's just their time is up. Well, it's, uh, it's a shame, but it's not. Just some things we can't do. We can't uh, do anything about. Grandmaster, we're, we're coming up on the 30 minutes here, and we'd love to have I, – I have some additional questions, sure. uh, but more specifically about that uh, – the idea of new lodges in your segment last year, you mentioned something about maybe when a lodge gets to a certain number of members that maybe that's an opportunity for them to form a new lodge. And uh, also uh, you, you're the DDGM designate program that you kind of initiated. And then also yes, have some questions about the terminology, the suite. We don't use that term down here and then advertising okay. and how the Masons are. So I've, I have several questions and if you would be open to coming back on another segment, we'd appreciate I it. Would. I would. Sounds like we might be three or four or eight more segments from that list, but <laughs> okay. um, really Hold quickly before, <laughs> really quickly before we do go, I, I want to say, first of all, that uh, four fifths of us on this call were at Grand Masonic Day uh, yesterday in Vancouver, and it was a great event. The The host of that event should be really proud. And I, I know I enjoyed it. And David did and Stephen, we were talking afterwards and it, it was a really good event. And, uh, and I encourage all of our listeners, if you get a chance next year, it's it's about this time every year, to, to please head up there. It's, it was it was very much worth it. And the second thing I wanted to say was that uh, Worshipful Brother Ben Stagner, who was a guest of the show a couple of years ago, um, had a, a small medical emergency. So we want to wish him well. And uh, oh. and I hear things are going well, but we oh. want to uh, hope that he's, uh, he's recovering well from his surgery and that everything's going fine for him and his family. So Okay. Well... Yeah. Yes, that's all. Keep in my thoughts. He he was a fantastic speaker and did a great job yesterday. <laughs> so uh, with that, uh, I want to thank you all for listening to the Working Tools Podcast. And on behalf of Jared and David and Stephen and myself, uh, thank you, Most Worshipful Sir, for, for being being on our humble show. Well, thank you for inviting me. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Appreciate this. And, <laughs> well, thank you. And we look forward to seeing or to talking to you next time on the Working Tools Podcast. Thank you. Goodbye.